Hi, you're watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is Rick Levy in Escondido, California. Uh, Rick and I have uh, a distinct pleasure of we have already poured and opened our our La Jicarita Mezcal Pechuga. Very beautiful label. Very nice presentation. Very, very bright and and festive. It's very festive. This is a a, a big deal. This is this is uh, probably only my second time having a pechuga from uh, uh, from anyone, and uh, we've never actually done a tasting side by side with another taster until this moment. It is a forty eight ABV. That's ninety six proof, um, technically speaking. This is a uh, a three a triple distilled because on the third distillation is where they hang that side of meat, which in this case is a turkey. Called pachuga de pavo. <laughs> yeah, pachuga de pavo. Uh, uh, not to be confused with pachuga from gallina or chicken or pollo, uh, depending on what region you're coming from. Uh, but anyway, we have taken the liberty of pouring some already in our Stasel Jarrito. Um, we were having technical difficulties, so we're just kind of really starting over. Um, what are you getting on the nose, Rick? What what are you what are you finding on it? Big bright espadine. And, and that's what I'm getting. Of the espadine. Uh, initially, I had just broken the seal on uh, off camera, and uh, I initially got a little bit of smoke, but not a lot. There's not a lot of smoke on the on the nose. Right. And now it's opened up a little bit more for me on the Stasel Jarrito. So, um, wow. It's, it's, I, I think this could be right in my wheelhouse. I can appreciate some of the smokier ones, but I like it when the, uh, you know, when the smoke is just more of an accent. Well, they're, they're becoming more and more that way. I think I think the the makers, whether they're the brand owners or the hand of the makers, are even though they're they're they are pit roasting it, they're finding ways to to not make the smoke as prominent uh, of on the on the aroma as as they, as they have been in the past. And I think it depends on the plant too. Right? Yeah. I've been through several plants. You know, uh, we just got some delivered a little while ago that was a Tobola. Camp, I, you know, every plant and every hand of the maker is going to be completely different. So, um, but I love this, this nose on this one. It's really bright and, and fruity. It's almost right. fruity. Now, like I said, we have never actually, I've had one Pechuga in my life. I've had it with Brujo and I got, I, and when I tasted it, I understood what the big deal was. Um, of getting these these specially infused mezcals, but they're so hard to get. So, uh, and that particular pechuga is, is probably chicken breast because uh, it I, I don't believe it was turkey breast. And they make some with Iberian ham. Go get good luck finding any of that right now. I, I believe the Gracias a Dios brand has one with Texas barbecue. Um, <laughs> which I've never been able to get my hands on, you know, and even, and they're they're based here in Texas. So I'm looking forward to doing this one with you. How about we take a sip and see what we're tasting? Because all I'm getting on the nose, very little no, very little smoke, a lot of espadine, bright, fruity. But, but let's see what the, you know, let's see what this tastes like. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Rick just did a little shimmy, boys and girls. Yeah, wow. that did it for me. Wow. wow. It just explodes in your mouth. Oh, that's it's gorgeous. This is this is huge. This is a huge mescal. Not only is it a higher ABV, but everything. And, you know, I, I got more of the smoke, and again, mm -hmm. not an off-putting smoke, more of the espadine, and then, like, as an afterthought, I'm getting that 
I'm getting the poultry. I'm getting the, but it's more like a like a like a chicken soup. My mom, my mom used to make all right. I can see that. Yeah. So it's like caldo, you know, like a like a like a chicken soup. It's like COVID soup. <laughs> oh man, that is beautiful. <clears throat> oh, there's just so much going on on the palate. It's huge. The retro nasal brings everything back too. It's a uh, there's there's like a um, I don't want to call it wood so much. It's like a like a plant, like a fibrous, you know, like um, um, a fibrous aftertaste. Um, but but it's again higher ABV, so it's it's not like you have to try to find anything it's just all coming up to you and, and saying hi you know and then the it coats your palate there's there's that there's like this layer of smoke and turkey soup That's <laughs> what, i mean it's turkey soup right it's you know how you have soup, you come on you know you've had chicken soup and i'm not talking campbell's i'm talking about the homemade stuff where where the you know it it lingers on your palate like like a like a great meal, you know. Um, wow, it's almost like indescribable. You know, <laughs> it's not as gamey as I thought it would be, because again, I have a I have a brujo uh, pechuga up there that was a lot gamier, and not that that was to me a bad thing. I really enjoyed it, because because the 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 animal breast was was definable i'm not sure i'm not sure if you can if you can define the turkey on in in this in this mix i don't what do you think rick yeah for me it's really subtle i can see what you're saying how you're describing it you know like a a, a small coating of a thin turkey soup yeah yeah i can follow that um but uh just on my own, I think it would be hard for me to pick out, you know, poultry out of this. Yeah. Um, again, I've had some that were more prominent with, with with the pechuga part of it, and certainly I've had I've had infused uh, bacanoras, but that's where they actually drop something in it to infuse it, you know, a fruit, a, a traditional fruit or something. Um, I think this is the kind of pechuga that the more you the more you have, the more it coats the palate, and then it'll start to appear on your palate once once all the other lingering flavors kind of kind of dissipate. Right, because it's got a great finish. That finish. Hey, well, wow. You know, with this profile, I'm willing to take on that challenge, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to put. Rick's gonna put a straw in it just shortly. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is the end of my day here. This is the last review. I don't have to save my palate for anything <laughs> after this. I can just have a good old time. Um, let me let me see if I can if I can hopefully read some of this stuff to you. This is only seventy eight cases of this unique small batch of mezcal was produced. The secret family recipe uses turkey, a variety of seasonal fruits, grains, nuts, and local herbs. So, aha. aha, I told you. So yeah. you didn't hear it in this one, but in the one that we had to stop and then restart recording, I thought maybe I was picking up some fruit and I had asked Mike if maybe they had put in some seasonal fruit in the in with the uh, in with the breast. Well, the I, I can see where they're talking about herbs because I did I do get more of an herbaceous, you know, it, it wasn't. It wasn't as turkey forward as I thought it would be, but it is probably more herbal and and one of those that you really have to spend a lot more time with because it's just going to coat your palate the more you do it. Um, it. It is sweet. It's telling us that there's uh, on the palate you might get um, iron minerals. That's true. You are getting some minerals, obviously. Um, mango, which is which is interesting. But it is really full body. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I think it would be full body even without the uh, 
without it being as high an ABV, even if it was an entry level, uh, like a, an 80 proof, you'd still, you, it would still come across as pretty full body. This is a third generation Maestro Mescalero. Uh, and it's not a, it's, it's not a slouch either. It's an award winner in 2019 uh, at the uh, San Francisco World Spirits Competition. So, um, wow. Yeah. The way this works is a raw turkey is traditionally suspended over the copper Olympic still during this, oh, the second distillation of the mezcal con pechuga. See, I'd always heard it was a third distillation. So now I'm wondering if this is a uh, uh, proprietary recipe because some mezcals, some pechugas have a third distillation and that's how they do it. Apparently this one not did not. This one did it on the second distillation. This unique process cooks the turkey and as the vapors of this of the distill pass through the protein, an undeniable richness is added to this elixir of the gods. So there you go. This is a celebratory mezcal. Um, it's not something that, that that's also why it's so so difficult to get. Um, because it's just they don't make it all the time. It's not, you know, 78 cases. That's it. And yeah. and we got what did we get? This it's is a lot one on my bottle. Yeah, I got P0001. So I don't know what the P stands for. You got the same Pechuga. thing. Pechuga. Pechuga, yeah. So this is this is So the, you know, it, they probably made one lot and that's the 78 cases. Yeah. Um that's a lot too because well you can pick this up at uh, Old Town Tequila right now for $60. I think that's the regular pricing. Um I would do it. Yeah. Um, if you're wondering you know, about you're the getting name, a full, you're getting a full 750. Um, it's you're getting a, you're, you're getting full ABV too. You're getting an yeah. eighty some odd proof. Uh, yeah, this is no joke, folks. This is this is one that you wanna you wanna make sure that you uh, you know there's there's no there's no pouring this and 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 you you're gonna keep this bottle around for a while, right? So this is uh, pretty special. Yeah. Um, that's outstanding. And it's really interesting that I'm not getting turkey notes on the nose, not like I did with, with the Brujo. And I'm going to have to look at my bottle after we get off the, off the air here. I'm going to check and see if they did the, the, the if they did the, uh, Pechuga on the third distillation or the second. That's the first time I'd ever read that it was done on the second distillation. I was led to believe that Pechugas take three distillations. But I guess, again, it depends on the hand of the maker. I guess it depends on, on who's making it. But this is one of those where you keep going back to it and you, def you, you, you get more from it the more it, uh, the more it goes across your palate. Wow. Mm. And if you're, if you're someone who's really into mezcal and you want to convert some of your friends, this might be a nice way to bring wow. them in. Wow. Uh, very approachable. If you're wondering about the name, La Jicarita, if you're not familiar with what that means, it's this. This is a Jicarita. This is a, a little tiny uh, Jicara. And this is what traditionally you'll see pictures of the, uh, the uh, just the hands of the Maestro Mezcalero. You can look at any picture on Instagram that makes a mezcal. And then you see the bubbles, las perlas. And, and um, that's what the, traditionally what you drink it out of. Uh, or a, a, an olla de barro, a, a little, the, the little sippy cups that um, that uh, Del Maguey used to give away, you know. And I have one, uh, but this is a jicarita. This is a gourd, and they come in different sizes. So the obviously the bigger the gourd, the more the easier it is for the mezcalero to tell you what the ABV is, because they look at the size of the bubbles and they can tell you within a few degrees how high the ABV is. That's that's how wonderful this stuff is. Um, amazing stuff, Rick. I think you'll agree with me for Brand of Promise nominee. Absolutely. And this is this is a high in the Pechuga high high ABV category, man. This is just <laughs> and again, if you have a QR code reader, you see that? Get yourself a good QR code reader on your cell phone. You can snap that tag and it tells you everything you need to know about this brand. Uh, that that may or may not be on the label. Um, these these 
folks were very nice to get us these bottles. There, there's more in their line, but that was the one that they could get uh, to us to, uh, right away. Really happy they did. I, I'm, I'm so jazzed. I'm glad that you got a chance to. It was worth just watching you shimmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, that's our take on La Jicarita. That's uh, La Jicarita Mezcal Artesanal Destilado con Pechuga. Okay, that's chicken breast. Or, no, excuse me, turkey breast. Let's, let's just make the right, let's make the right poultry call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and for 60 bucks, that's a steal. This is an award winner, folks. So you could you could do a heck of a lot worse uh, for more for more money. Uh, that's for that amount of money at that price and this quality. Again, I'm I'm saying it's larceny. You might as well back up the truck and buy whatever's left on that case, man. Because right once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but anyway, that's our take on La Hicarita. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is Rick Levy in Escondido, California. Uh, you've been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff, Steel Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to us if you're listening to us on uh, iTunes. Uh, and if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.